Praise the Lord, everybody. And we could all stand. Psalms 95, verse 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to, to the rock of our salvation. And verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. We were back there and we were listening to one of the, I was listening to one of the songs while I was praying. And I, I just started, when I just started praying, I just started saying thank you, mostly for my family and my wife and my, her, <laughs> my mom. <laughs> I couldn't think. I couldn't think. Um, and I, I was trying to think of a verse to come up with to come up here. And I just started thinking, you know, I just want to praise him for everything he's given me tonight. I want to praise him for being here. I want to praise him for letting me be able to bring my kids here. So if we could just start this service off with praise and worship and say, God, I'm so thankful to be here tonight. Bless me, bless me, bless me. 
Lord's been good to me. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. I know the Lord's been good to me. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. I know the Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. The Lord's been good to me. Bless me, bless me, bless me. The Lord's been good to me. He has blessed me, bless me, bless me. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. He's been my bread and water too. He's been my bread and water too. The Lord's been good to me. He's been my bread and water too. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. I know the Lord's been good to me. Bless me, bless me, bless me. The Lord's been good to me. Bless me, bless me, bless me. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. He's been my bread and water too. The Lord's been good to me. He's been my bread and water too. Lord's been good to me. He's been my bread and water too. Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. The Lord's been good to me. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. The Lord's been good to me. Bless me, bless me, bless me. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has done. Oh, no one else can do me like the Lord has the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Told me to run on, he healed my body. Told me to run on, he healed my body. Told me to run on, he's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Well, I know he's my friend.
Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It is so good to be in God's house this evening. Amen. Feeling the presence of God, being able to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. I know that when we take our needs, our requests before the Lord, He's going to hear. He's going to answer our cry tonight. Amen. The, the Word of God lets us know that if we uh, seek, we're going to find. If we knock, it's going to be opened unto us. Amen. So God is good. Amen. That He hears and He answers our cry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Several on the list tonight for healing. Let's remember Sue Duncan and Arlene Rhodes. Uh, Darren Howery, he has cancer list here. And Sister Birchfield, uh, Carol and Donnie Massey, and... Uh, Sister Janie Sennett and uh, I believe Bill Sennett, that's so your, your uh, dad, okay, and uh, Tanya Sennett, uh, several others that are listed here, um, Deborah Jeffers, still in need of prayer, so a lot of folks that need a physical touch, a physical healing, and we can believe God together for that, amen. Praise God. Also, several listed in need of salvation. Uh, quite a few folks, and that's a good thing because we want people to come into the church. God fill them with the Holy Ghost. They're baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Of course, several unspoken requests. If you have a special unspoken request, just raise your hand. God knows all about that. And Pastor, did you have anything you would like to add? Remember these two special, very special needs. Praise God. All right, let's take these to the Lord right now in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you this evening, God. We're so thankful, Lord, for the great privilege, the opportunity right now to call upon that name that is above every other name, that mighty, that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, when we call upon the name, Lord, we know, God, you hear and you answer our cry. We believe you tonight as we lift you to your feet. These requests, these names, Lord. God is here and you're working. And we believe that the answer is on the way, oh God. them to Hallelujah. Amen. We would like uh, for Brother Brent, if you would just take these and pray for these folks throughout the remainder of the list. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and thank God for hearing the answer. Hallelujah. One more time, let's lift our hands to the Lord. Give the Lord praise. God, we worship you. We exalt the Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, how great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated as the ushers come. Worship the Lord in our giving. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Brother Wedo, ask God's blessing on our worship and giving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord has blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. There is not a person in this auditorium, this sanctuary tonight, that God has not somehow blessed you. That God is not somewhere in your journey, in your walk with God, maybe even some of you, this week God has somehow blessed you. Amen. Amen. Every one of us. Every single one of us. Now some of us don't look like it. But God has blessed us. Somebody, somebody stand up and testify. Somebody share a blessing, a testimony of what God's done in your life. Sister Janie, stand and testify. If you're not going to do it, I'll call on you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sister Paula. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody else, stand and share how the Lord has blessed you. 
All right, Brother Britt. Amen. I'll tell you, some great things happened here Sunday. It was incredible, wasn't it? Somebody else stand and testify. Real quick. Don't, take, don't, don't make it a forever testimony. I'll, you don't have to tell us everything God's done. Just tell us something God's done. Amen. Wonderful. Somebody else, real quick. In Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Two things are always certain. That we are going to face things and that God will always get the glory. One more person. One more person stand and testify. Declare the goodness of God. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, Sister Pam, originally they said they wasn't sure she would survive. Is that right? Yeah, they, they, thought, they th thought it was extremely dangerous uh, to do that surgery, and they ended up doing it, and, and uh, it, has, it has helped her. Amen. All right. Stand with me if you would. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Romans, the eighth chapter. You're going to recognize this verse. Probably know it by heart. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, but we're not going to stop at 28. We're going to go on to 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now I could shout on that verse. I could stop and shout right there. If God be for us, who can be against us? But these verses all kind of weave back to verse 28. To all things. 
I want to preach to you or teach to you or talk to you the purpose in the all things. The purpose in the all things. Let's pray. Lord, in your precious name, God, we glorify your name and I worship you tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for precious people of God. I thank you for great testimonies of answered prayer of how God have you, how you have come through and healed and God provided and worked things together. I, I thank you tonight, God, and I glorify your mighty name for, Lord, you are God and beside you there is no other God. Lord, tonight anoint my mind that I can speak to the precious saints of God tonight, your wonderful people. Let my mind be alert to the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There are many verses in the Word of God that declare the sovereignty of God, but I don't know of any that may declare God's sovereignty like Romans chapter 8, verse 28, 29. How they declare that God is in control. If you ever need reminded that God is in control, go right here. If you ever need to be encouraged and understand that when things are falling apart around you, and you need to be reminded that God has got his hand upon your life and God has got his hand upon your direction and your path and you can go right here for all things work together for good to them that love God and the call according to his purpose. Paul doesn't get started very far into that verse until Paul establishes he's not talking about something that we hope for. He's not talking about something that might be. He declares it with every bit of faith within him, for we know. For we know. There was no doubt in the heart of this man who endured shipwreck, who endured beatings, who, who had been outcast by those that he used to uh, have for, be friends with. When he started following Jesus, it separated him from everything and everybody that he had known. But he said, I know. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know without reservation. I know without anything holding me back. I, I know that all, all things work together for good to them that love God. When you know something, there's no doubt in your spirit. When you know something, it helps you face things differently. When you know something, it helps you endure things that would destroy you otherwise. When you know something, it gives you a strength to stand when everybody else is on their knees. It, it gives you a strength to march forward in the midst of everything falling apart. It gives you the strength to go on. I know that if I throw something up in the air, I know it's gonna come down. I know there's such a thing as gravity and gravity is going to pull it back to the ground. I know when it's raining because my senses, my feeling, my seeing, my hearing, all of these working together tell me that it is raining. I know those things. You don't have to convince me that the sky is blue. You don't have to convince me. I've, I've been able to experience and see it for myself. When you know something, nobody has to try to help you understand it. Nobody has to try to help. When you know that all things work together for the good. All things, every situation. He didn't leave anything out. He didn't leave any small thing out. And he didn't leave any big thing out. He didn't try to, try, try to, uh, try to uh, skip across some things and, and, and try to ignore some. No, he just, he just said, let me just tell you, it's not just things, it's all things. 
It's not some things, it's all things. It's not a couple of things, it's all things. It's not every other thing, it's all things. All things are in this. All things are working together. You see, I see the sovereignty of God in this because the Bible says, whom he foreknew. To foreknow something is to have knowledge beforehand. Before you ever got to this day, God knew you would be here. Before you ever endured your first test, God knew you would step into that. Before you ever faced your first problem, God foreknew what was going to happen. And he said, I know these things. God who sees the end from the beginning. He foreknew those who would serve him. Now that's not a God choosing. That's not a God say, well, I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to choose that one and I'm not going to choose you and I, I'm not going to choose you. That's, that, that's not what that is. God just simply foreknew what you would do. God had a knowledge ahead of time of the altar service that would pull your heart. God had a knowledge of the night you would get the Holy Ghost and who would be praying for you. God had a knowledge of the moment the light would click on in your spirit that you would understand there's one God and his name is Jesus. God foreknew these things. He understood these things. God never overrides choice. He never overrides choice. If he did, he would have done that in the garden. If he was going to override choice and he was going to save humanity from all the grief and all the, all the stuff that sin was going to bring into the world, he'd have done that before it started. But God does not override choice. He just foreknows. He just knows ahead of time what's going to happen. God just understands and sees beyond what you and I can see. That's the sovereignty of God. That's the sovereignty of God. That's the God's hand. Now, I understand God's hand directs things. and God orders the steps of the righteous. And God directs things. And God puts things in order. And God, God uh, does all of these things that keeps things uh, in place. But you understand, that's just the sovereignty of God. God doesn't change your mind. And God doesn't alter your choice. It comes down to Whosoever will, let him drink of the waters of life freely. It's whosoever will, let him come and partake. Whosoever will. I wish there were times, there were ways that we could have everything we want without having to go through some of the things we go through. I wish there were times we could have everything we want without the exertion it takes for us to endure certain things. But you have to understand that God chooses us. He, he, he said who he foreknew, he predestinated. And he prede who, he, who he predestinated, he also called. And who he called, he also justified. And who he justified, he also glorified. I, I'll preach on all of that another time. But th there's a progression. There's a progression in what God knows. And there's a progression that leads us in our walk with God. That God is taking us from one place to another. And it takes this place to prepare us for this place. And it takes this uh, to get us ready for that. Uh, and it takes this this so that we can endure this and all of these things are preparing us for God has called us and whom God calls God uses whom God calls God uses they have an anointing on their life there is an anointing upon your life you may or may not be a preacher but there's an anointing on your life you, you may or may not be a pastor but there's a, an anointing that's on your life those that have that calling, that anointing, they speak the word of God with power and with authority. I want God to use me like that. I want God to use me like that. I, I want God to direct my ministry and use me. I want that kind of a ministry that's powerful in the spirit and in the anointing of God. 
And we see these people that are powerful and the anointing of God is upon them. And God uses them. But what we don't see are all things. What we don't see are the all things that took them to get from here to there. What we don't see are the, the all-night prayer meetings. What we don't see are the fastings. What we don't see are the times that they endured. Or what we don't see are the tests they had to go through to get to that point. What we don't see are the mountains they had to climb, the valleys they had to walk through. What, what we don't see are the things that took them from place to place to prepare them to be the man and the woman of God that God wants to use and how God wants to use them. And see what it comes down to is when God is taking us through the all things. How do you deal with the all things? Do you understand that the all things are going to work with something else? Because this trial is going to prepare you for this trial. It's going to prepare you for this trial. It's going to prepare you for this trial. What you have to understand is all things are we being weaved together by an almighty sovereign God that is working in your life. Every day God is working in your life. I remember reading a story a couple years ago, man, had two sons. One was as different as the other. One was very, he, he was very chipper, very, very positive. He, he was always smiling, always looking on the bright side. The other son was just the opposite of that. He was very negative. He, 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 he uh, always saw, saw the reason you couldn't do it. He always saw the glass was half empty instead of half full. These, these, these boys were just so different. And, and the man was, the father was really intrigued by this. So he decided to test the boys. And he took, he took one of the sons, and the negative son, the son that uh, never saw anything good in anything, he took him and he put him in a room. And in that room was every toy a boy could want. Every toy imaginable a boy could want. He put him in that room and, and it was just filled wall to wall. Uh, across, across this way and that way. And it was just filled with toys. And, and, and then he took his other son, the, the son that was always looking on the bright side. And he took him to a room and he opened the door and, took his son in the room, and that room was filled with trash. Trash bags, just garbage everywhere, just piles of it all over the room. It was so bad it smelled like manure in that place. It was just, it was just disgusting. And, and he said, I want you to stay in here a while. So both boys were left in the room. The, the, the one boy that never could see anything good, he left him in the room with all the toys. And the other boy left him in the room with all the garbage and the stench. And then he went and went on his way. And he came back a few hours later and he went to the room where all the toys were and to look on the boy that never could find anything good. And he, he lo looked in, he was expecting to find him uh, on top of some toy, riding it or playing or, or, or something. But he looked in, he saw the boy and he was crouched over in the corner. And he said, he said, what's going on? He said, nothing here I want to play with. Nothing here I want to do. I go, well, that's, that's, just, that's just odd, he said. And so he, he leaves him and he goes to the other room and uh, opens the door. The other boy in the stench is terrible. And he walks in and he finds the boy. And, and the boy's up on top of the, the garbage. And he's just, man, he's just tearing into it. And he's just pulling it like this. And he's just going after it, everything in there. And, uh, and, and he said, he said, son, what are you doing? He said, he said, Dad, this room smells so much like manure. There's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> it depends on what you do with the trials or what you get out of it. It depends on how you handle what God, what, what God brings your way and how you come upon that as to what you receive out of it and, and what God can do in your life. I'm afraid there's too many believers that kind of get the idea and the attitude that all, all I got to do is just, just be filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. And God's just going to give me everything I've dreamed of. And God's just going to use me this and do that. 
have, but uh, I, I don't have to work at it, and I don't have to have any discipline or obedience in my life, and I don't have to put any effort into it. Folks, the fact is, it costs what it costs, and it never goes on sale. You read through your Bibles. Blessing after blessing is pronounced upon you. You've got blessing. We shared some of them tonight. Thank you for sharing your testimonies. They build faith for other people. Thank you for sharing your testimonies tonight. And, and you've heard me preach it from this pulpit. God wants to bless you. And God wants to use you in the kingdom of God. But sometimes you're going to have to endure something. Sometimes you're going to have to go through something that's going to prepare you for what God wants wants you to do because there's purpose in the all things there's purpose in the all things sometimes you have to labor and sometimes you have to fight that's why Paul said I fight the good fight of he said, he said this, this, this faith walk is, isn't just a stroll this faith walk is not just a, just a little, little march around the block. No, this faith walk is marching into battle. This faith walk is willing to stand and fight for the faith. Willing to hold on to truth when everything else has fallen. Willing to hold on to holiness when people are walking away from it. Willing to live separate from the world when everybody else says, I want to be like the world. It's a battle, but it's a walk of faith. And he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And there's purpose in all things. When God, when you go through things in your life and you endure things, and God is putting these things, uh, not necessarily in your path, but when they happen. And not everything comes from God, don't get me wrong. Not every trial comes from God. Sometimes trials just come from life. Sometimes it just happens because of life. And we go through things. Sometimes we have health problems because of the way we eat. Hello, hallelujah, amen, glory to God. It's the truth. It's the truth. Sometimes we, we have problems just because life comes upon us and things happen. But God still uses that. God still uses that. There's purpose in it. These things that, that you have to endure that are necessary to becoming what God has ordained you to be. What God's purpose to fulfill in your life and in the calling that God has upon you. Did, did you ever notice? Did you ever notice that when the children of Israel, when they came, put numbers up there, when they came, back to Kadesh Barnea and God who has promised them the, the promised land and, and God they send the spies over and Joshua and, and uh, Caleb go over and, and then the, the other 12 spies go over and they walk into the promised land the land that flows with milk and honey the words were this, and there we saw the giants. There we, you ever wonder why did God leave giants in the land? Do you ever wonder why God didn't just, God who could remove the giants? God who could, who could, who, who could take the giants out of the land just as easily as he could leave them in the land. He decided, let's leave some giants in the land. Do you ever wonder why God just left them there? There they saw the giants, and it was the giants that destroyed their faith. It was the walled cities that destroyed their faith. It was all the things that they saw that they were going to have to overcome. that kept an entire generation from receiving what God wanted them to receive. An entire generation lost the blessing of God 
because they were too intimidated by what they were going to have to deal with when they crossed the Jordan. You want to know why God left the giants there? God left the giants there because the children of Israel were going to have to learn to fight. They were going to have to learn that if they were going to possess the promised land, if they were going to walk over into the promised land, they, could, they were not just going to walk over there and the enemy just kind of fall over. The enemy wasn't just going to run just because they, they crossed the river. They were going to have to possess the land. They were going to have to fight the giants and, get, and, and possess the land. They were going to have to deal with the enemy. Folks, the devil doesn't back down because you got the Holy Ghost. And the devil doesn't run because you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you are his arch his arch enemy and you've got power and you've got authority over him and he knows it but he doesn't back down he's still going to fight you he, that's why we got to resist the devil that's why we got to fight against the devil let me tell you why let me tell you why another reason they, the giants are still left in the land because the giants will determine Who's the professor and who's the possessor? The giants will, just, will figure out that it will be you facing the giant that will determine whether well, you're just going to be the one that talks about it or you're going to be the one that can stand there and step out by faith and walk with God and stand before the enemy and declare I come in the name of the Lord God of Israel. It's going to determine who does it. The one thing to confess, it's one thing to confess the promises of God. It's another thing to possess the promises of God. It's another thing to talk about it. It's another, a, to, a totally a different thing to strap on your sword and to, and to put on your breastplate and to put on your helmet and to gird your loins and to strap on your, the, the, the armor on your feet and to pick up your shield and your sword and march into battle to possess what God has promised you. Oh, somebody, somebody needs to declare, I'm going to the enemy camp and I will take back what belongs to me. Giants expose grasshoppers in the crowd. When they, when they put, put numbers back up there. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our, isn't that powerful? That is absolutely powerful. There was two in, or three words, in our own sight. And we saw ourselves as grasshopper. We saw ourselves unable to defeat them. And, and that was true in their own ability. The problem was they didn't see through the eyes of faith. They didn't see through the eyes of promise. They didn't see through the eyes that God had promised them the promised land. And he said, I will give you the land. I will give it to you. The thing was, these guys were grasshoppers before they even crossed over. They did. It was, when, it was when they got over and saw the giants that they were exposed as grasshoppers. It's when they got over there and saw the enemy and they saw how big they were and how big their cities were that they all, all of a sudden realized that they were just grasshoppers in the crowd. And grasshoppers usually blend in into their environment, but giants uncover them because grasshoppers, they, they, they all stand, that's when they start speaking. When, when they see the giants. That's when they start making noise when the enemy comes, when they're afraid of the enemy. That's when they, you start hearing them, we can't, we can't, we can't. Oh, we need somebody says we can. We need somebody to declare by faith, we can. 
Amen. We need people that will stand up by faith and speak the word of faith and declare that God is greater and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because you'll never, listen to me, you will never have promised land faith with grasshopper mentality. You will never have promised land faith with grasshopper mentality. And you know, you realize not, not only does, does the giants expose those things, but when we face all things, when we start coming up against all things, it's in adversity, it's in struggle, it's in testing that we really begin to realize who we are in God or who we are. We kind of, you find out what you're made of when you start facing the trials, when, when the real pressure comes and the real testing comes. All of a sudden, you, you really get to know yourself. You get to know who you are and you get to know what you're made of. You get to all of a sudden realize, are you really the worshiper in the midst of trial that you've said you are? Are you, real, are you really the person of faith that you, that you talk about yourself being? Are you, are you really that person that walks in victory that you, that you claim to be? And you begin to realize that when adversity comes and when you start dealing with trouble and you start dealing with trial and testing in your life, all of a sudden yeah, it's a little harder to praise God. It takes a little more effort to lift up your hands. It takes a little more effort to sing victory, victory shall be mine. It takes a little more effort but if you've got faith in your heart if you got faith in your spirit if you got faith down in you it doesn't matter what the adversity is you're going to be able to see it you're going to be able to do it because it's in adversity that's when you really get to know God it's in adversity. That's when you really get to call on the Lord and you get to, you get to spend a time with God and you start bringing yourself before the Lord and understand and start seeing God move. And like you've testified here tonight, how God has ordered your steps, how God has directed you, how God has provided for you, how God has healed you, how God has done these things. David... David's first battle wasn't when he walked out to face Goliath. David had battles when he was watching the sheep on the hillside. When he had to fight the lion, he had to fight the bear. David's first battle wasn't walking out. That's what we preach about and we, we, we shout about and, and we we. we Glorify God about. We do all that. That's a great battle. We should. God deserves all the glory. But it wasn't his first battle. David had to, had to fight the bear. And David had to fight the lion. When nobody else was watching. There was no audience for him. There was nobody there to, to praise him for his big victory. There was nobody there to pat him on the back because he'd done a good job. No, David, David just fought because he was faithful. David just stood against the lion and the bear because he was faithful. He had been given responsibility, and his responsibility was perfect, protect, the, protect the flock. And nobody had to be there to watch him do that. Nobody. He didn't run home and say, Dad, I just killed a bear. Would you pat me on the back? Would you tell me how good a job I've done? No. See, some of the battles you fight, nobody else is going to know about. Some of the battles you deal with, nobody else is going to understand. to know yourself you get to know your God and it's in those battles that you get stronger it's in the all things that work together it's in the all things that you really your roots dig deep 
in the church and your roots dig deep in your relationship with God and you become rooted and grounded because you start looking in the book, God, I need a word from you today. God, I'm fighting a battle. I, I'm dealing with stuff in my life. God, give me a scripture today. Give me a word. Give me a song. Just let me hear something from you, oh God, that'll bless me and encourage me and direct me. And when you start doing that, your roots start going deeper. You start di digging deeper. Your, your roots start getting grounded in the things of God. God didn't take the giants out because he knew the giants. The giants would be more beneficial in the land than they would be out of the land. I know we all wish, we all wish there were no battles. There's some battles I've dealt with. I, I wish I never had to go through. There's some, there's some things in my life that that I had to conquer and things that I had to deal with and in my walk with God and, 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 and people that, that hurt me and uh, all, just stuff, just things. And I had to deal with these things. I had to face these things. It wasn't God's fault. God, I, I, don't, I don't blame God for anything because God is working all things together. For good. All things. You, you realize in the all things, you really learn what's important and what's not important. If you watched any of the news clips from North Carolina, Tennessee, after Helene, Florida, after, what was the name of that hurricane, Mitch? No, the one in Florida. Yeah, it wasn't like Milton. Milton. The one in Florida. When you when you when you watch when you watch those and you see those people, and some of them lost everything. They lost everything. But somewhere, and not all of them could say this, but a lot of them could. But I've still got my family. I've still got my family. I watched a clip today of a man, his wife. They were taking care of her 90-year-old grandmother, and they had a, a little boy, probably, probably six, seven. And they were in their house, and a tree fell on the side of the house. They were still, the house was still habitable. But then all of a sudden, the back door slammed open, and water just started pouring, just off the mountain behind them, just started pouring in into their house. And all of a sudden, Oh, it wasn't a little boy, it was a little girl, I'm sorry. All of a sudden, all of a sudden they had to get a 90-year-old and a little six or seven-year-old girl. She was the only one that had her suitcase, pack, suitcase packed. Dad said she was the only one ready. And, and, and they had to get all of that together and get out of that house. But they were able to say after it was all over, you know, we don't have our house anymore and our cars are gone. We've lost all that. But we've still got each other. You learn what's important. When you're, when you're faced with adversity and struggle and trial and all things, you start learning your relationship with God is first. Above all else, your relationship with God is more important than anything else because it's your relationship with God. <coughs> it's your relationship with God that's going to get you through. It's your relationship with God that's going to hold you hold you steady. It's your relationship with God that's going to help you make it. And then you understand how important the church is and how important the refuge of the house of God is. And you realize how important that God has provided this for you. And this is a place where you can get help and strength. And this is a place where God renews your mind and your spirit. And you, you come through all of this stuff and when you know you had to fight for what you've got, you appreciate it a whole lot more. When you realize you had to fight, and, you, and let me tell you something, when you've got to fight for it, you're not going to let anybody take it from you. When you've got to fight for it, you're, you're going to hold on to it that much harder. You're going you're to make sure you keep it that much harder, harder because it tests, those struggles test your level of commitment. 
the, the heart of the struggle. And folks' tests just kind of keep getting harder and harder. You go over one, you get to another. And, and this one may not be as hard as this one, but here you go. And how, how, how strong and where's your commitment on a scale to God? Where's your commitment of living for God, even though it's not always easy? Even, so, even though things happen and good and bad things happen to good people all the time. But the good thing about it is when you've labored through all of that, when you've endured through all of that, when you have fought through all of that, the Bible says there is a rest. There's a rest for you. The Bible speaks of laboring in the Lord, and, and, and there's a reward that comes according to your labor. And 2 Corinthians, did I give you 2 Corinthians 5 9? Okay, I'll just read it to you. 2 Corinthians 5 9. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of Him. That labor is that we may please the Lord. That's why the scripture says, Come unto me, all ye that. And I will give you rest. There's rest for those who go through testing and trial and endure. There's rest for those who hold on and faithful. Hebrews says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the, that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. There's rest and there's reward. And we understand that through the struggle and through the testing, through the all things, the warfare, the, the waiting patiently, the enduring, that God always has a reward for those that are faithful. Because through it all, God is developing us. And our faith, our faith is forged. Our faith is forged in the furnace of adversity. Our faith is strengthened in the furnace of adversity. Brother Johnston, I'd rather avoid the battle. I'd rather avoid the battle, brother. Just, just let me sit on the sideline. Just let me be the onlooker. Stay out of the struggle. That's what Israel did at Kadesh Barnea. The first generation of Israel forfeited their inheritance. They forfeited their inheritance because they avoided the giants. They avoided the all things. They dodged the fight. I wonder how many of the people of God have forfeited their promises. Because they refuse to fight. They refuse to stand against the enemy that comes against them. They couldn't take the heat, so they back down. I wonder how many of the people of God have lost out on what the Bible says great, great and many promises, precious promises. As long as everything was going smooth, we're all right. Shouting, we can shout with everybody else. We can dance with everybody else. But when struggle comes, we give in to discouragement. And we give in to fear and we give in to doubt. I'm talking about all things. All things. For we know that all things. God foreknew it before it came. All things. God prepared you before, before you got there. All things, all things work together for good. And if we'll be truthful tonight, we are what we are because of all things. We are what we are. Our faith is what it is because we've endured the all things. We've stood strong in the test and the trial and the battle. 
and we've held on and we've been faithful through it all. What you had to fight for, what you, what you had to fight against, the things you had to overcome, all of that, the all things. And here's the best thing of the struggle. The best thing of the all things is that it prepares you it qualifies you. If you've been through tests and you've overcome, it qualifies you to help somebody else. It qualifies you. When, when you've been through something, you can help somebody. Some of you, you've been through things I've never been through. You've got a perspective I would never have. You can pray prayers for people that I wouldn't understand. Because of the all things in your life. You can minister to people and help people because when you've stood your ground, when you've pulled out your sword and you've protected your, your little your little your patch of spiritual ground that you've got, and you fought your battles and you conquered your giants, you're qualified through all of those battles. The Bible says, who comforted us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. That we are able to comfort one another. There have been times that some of you have come and laid hands on me and prayed for me when I've been going through a test you didn't know about. And God worked through your prayer. And God intervened because you prayed for me. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being there for me and praying for me. And you've done it to one another as we minister to one another. The purpose of all things. The purpose of all things. God wants you to realize that even though the devil sent it to destroy you, God's going to use it to build you. And when you've gone through it and you've endured it and you're able to go out, you're going to help somebody else. You're going to, be, you're going to have enough faith that you're going to be able to minister to somebody else that's gone through exactly what you've gone through and endured what you've gone through because that's the will of God. And God is bringing you to a better, a greater place. God is bringing you to a place of influence. God is bringing you into a place of blessing where you can help your brothers and sisters in the Lord and the church and you're able to minister to people and share a testimony with people and share what God has done in your life. I'm going through something because I'm growing in my struggle. You're going through something because you're growing through your struggle you're building your spiritual muscles the all things Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 you know let me, let me say one more thing before I get to that let me say one more thing because this is so important this is so important and I want you to really listen to me because this happens and I'm not saying it happens you do it I'm saying it, it happens because it just amazes me the people who have fought battles and went through battles and have zero tolerance for other people that are going through the same thing they went through. It amazes me how somebody that has gone through it can be so judgmental of somebody else that's going through it. Honey, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. None of us. And we're all fighting battles. Every single one of us is dealing with this flesh. Your battle may not be my battle. You may be dealing with pride. You may be dealing with a haughty spirit. It 
Seems like I read somewhere that God resists the proud. We're all dealing with it. And nobody in here has got a right. Nobody in here has got a right to point a finger at anybody. Hello? Nobody. We got, we're, we're in this together. And if you've been through it and somebody else is going through it, you ought to be right there by their side, helping them, picking them up, encouraging them, blessing them, praying for them. Being with them. You ought to be right there with them and helping them get through it. I just threw it in. That's free. I just threw it in. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. I'm glad we can have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejo rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And look at this. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, in the all things, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. One trial. Preparing us for the next one. One trial. Tribulation. Work of patience. Patience, experience, and experience, hope. Because it all things. Because all things work together them that love God and the called according to his purpose. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Lord if you would. Sister Missy, sing. God is he's my refuge Oh yes he is. My refuge in time of oh, trouble. Oh blessed be your name. Oh yes he my refuge and strength. Hallelujah. I'm saving the time. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, 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 oh we I'm worship you, God. Oh, oh, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 